My name is Matt Rubinoff. I'm the founder and executive director of Center for Student Opportunity. Uh, Brenda, who is our college partner relations associate, you'll be hearing from uh, a bit uh, more uh, as we go. Um, hopefully everybody is, is seeing uh, my screen and, and the PowerPoint uh, slide deck that we're going to go through today. I want to start uh, by first uh, offering some context for the work that we do and why we do the work that we do. Uh, we obviously think that there's something special about being the first in your family to attend and, and graduate from college. I think those who are joining us today would agree. Uh, there are four and a half million students enrolled in post-secondary institutions today that are low-income first-generation college students. Unfortunately, nine out of every ten will not earn a bachelor's degree by the age of 24. The issue, in our opinion, isn't so much that first-generation college students lack the motivation or the qualification for college, uh, but simply that too often these students lack access to good information and support to successfully navigate the college process and perhaps more importantly to access the colleges that are most committed to their success. So that's where we come in. Uh, we know that there are so many four-year colleges and universities like the ones that you guys represent that care about first-gen students, uh, that can be accessible and affordable options for them, uh, and certainly give students the best shot at being successful in and out of the classroom. But the challenge is making sure that the students and those who are supporting these students really believe it. All too often, even high-achieving, motivated students are choosing post-secondary options that aren't really the most conducive to their success, uh, the for-profits, the trade schools, the non-selective state schools, um, simply because that's, why, that's uh, what they believe to be the only realistic and attainable and, and affordable options for them. So our goal, first and foremost, is to help aspiring first-gen students take a more glass-half-full approach to their pursuit of college and to realize that the opportunity for a four-year college does exist particularly at schools that have campus programs and support services to help them succeed academically, socially, and financially. So who are our college partners? Uh, they are four-year, typically residential colleges and universities that share our commitment to supporting first-generation college students on their campus. They're generally characterized as institutions that have above-average retention and graduation rates. Uh, and a demonstrated commitment to first-generation college students uh, by the campus programs and support services and opportunities that support them. Together, uh, this community of, of peer institutions form a, a strong network that through our programs are able to promote and strengthen uh, your efforts uh, on behalf of first-gens uh, to reach prospective first-generation college students who are utilizing our program and resources, and uh, to share and learn best practices for successfully recruiting and retaining first-generation college students. As a nonprofit organization, we do ask college partners to, to fulfill an annual partnership contribution, which uh, help us sustain and grow our programs. So since 2006, we've been partnering with uh, colleges and universities. Uh, with this fall recruitment period, we're going to eclipse that 200 college partner mark, which we're really excited about and continue to grow beyond that. But we've also been creating tools to help first gens with their college search and planning. And we've learned two main things along the way. One is that popular college search and planning websites and guidebooks really aren't cutting it for the unique needs and interests of first-generation college students today. And second, that as much as well-meaning counselors, teachers, and mentors want to help, at the end of the day, uh, students are really responding most to their peers to motivate them in their pursuit of college. So last year, with the help of a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, we launched the I'm First Project. Uh, it's an online community that is celebrating first-generation college students 
and uh, supporting the next generation of students who are working hard to reach that goal. Uh, we've had some early success and received a warm reception from students, from schools, from youth serving organizations, uh, and even from media across the U.S. Uh, we've been covered on NPR's Marketplace Morning Report, in the Chronicle of Higher Education, Inside Higher Ed, Huffington Post, USA Today, uh, to name a few. The First Lady contributed to our Arm for Stories campaign, which we'll tell you a little bit more about as we go. Uh, and we attended the Clinton Global Initiative University Conference earlier this year, which was a really cool experience. And, and with this momentum, we're continuing to, to grow our community of college partners who share our mission and care about first gens on their campus and want to engage in this work. Uh, we believe strongly that a, t a high tide raises all boats, um, that the more colleges that support our mission and participate in our program, the stronger our collective voices will be to demonstrate uh, that the opportunity for college does exist for first gens. That's really a driving principle we want our college partners to share, and that in, in and of itself would be a compelling reason to join us, but at the same time, our program delivers some real value and benefit uh, for participating institutions. With uh, We help college partners reach prospective students, promote and strengthen their efforts on behalf of first-gen college students, and share and build upon these best practices for recruiting and retaining first-gen students. And, and so um, through the college partner application process, we'll have a chance to learn more about your institution's commitment to first-gens. And you'll also have the opportunity to learn more about the ins and outs of our program uh, and to ask us questions. Uh, I should mention, too, that we will field some questions at the end of this webinar. So as uh, we're, we're talking, if you have any questions that come to mind, please uh, enter those in the questions box, and we'll try to, to field a few um, towards the end as we have time. Um, but really, to help you out as you consider completing the application for partnership, we want to give you a cursory overview of our program and highlight the major benefits and services of partnership. Our flagship initiative, as I mentioned, and, and one of the first areas of engagement for college partners is the I'm First project. Uh, I'm First is first and foremost a college search tool that's designed with first gens in mind. And unique from other college search tools, the profiles of colleges and universities on imfirst.org uh, really help students answer the question, what's in it for me as a first generation college student? We get beyond talking about the leafy green campus and Gothic architecture and really painting a broad brushstroke of the institution's facts and figures. We want to focus that profile on more important campus programs and uh, opportunities for first gen. So, does the campus have a fly-in program for prospective students, or a summer bridge program for incoming students, or peer mentoring on campus to help students persist to graduation? The facts and figures on the college profile, excuse me, highlight uh, student diversity, student success, affordability, and admissions metrics. Uh, students can tell a college that they're interested in a particular school, and they can share a college with their friends on social media. Moreover, the uh, college partners can identify and, and recruit uh, the thousands of, of first-generation college-bound students who are using timefirst.org. This is a, uh, a screenshot of the college partner dashboard, uh, and you can see um, the number of interested students in your institution, the ability to export uh, interested students. You're also able to query the entire database of um, prospective students uh, and, and search based on certain criteria, uh, as well as contact and, and communicate with the students who are part of the community as well. This is a, a screenshot of um, a sample uh, student uh, profile um, and college view of a student profile. 
We've also been a leader in encouraging and assisting colleges to really build relationships with uh, community-based organizations and college access programs. So on I'm First, college partners have direct access to a national directory of, co of college access programs, CBOs, college prep, charter schools. Uh, currently, we have over 2,500 organizations uh, in our directory, and this number is growing. It's uh, grown to what we believe to be the largest and, and most comprehensive directory of CBOs and college access programs uh, available in the country. Uh, this database allows partners to go beyond just the high school visits during your recruitment travels and to connect with these organizations that we really believe are picking up the slack where today's high schools are falling short with helping low-income first-gen students navigate the college process. Hopefully, uh, CBOs and college access programs, uh, to some extent, are already part of your recruitment travel strategy. Uh, we're still working to get all of these organizations to fully build out their profiles, uh, but this is an example of what one of the completed profiles look like. Uh, so a link to their location, their website, a phone number, uh, points of contact that you can email directly with a click of a button, um, an overview of the program as well as highlighting the populations they serve, the program uh, areas, and uh, when they offer services. Moving on, uh, for six years now we have been awarding scholarships to first generation college students who, who are matriculating to a college partner institution. Uh, in turn, the scholarship winners are chronicling their college experiences and giving advice on the ifirst.org blog. Uh, when we first introduced the blog to our previous CSO College Center website, very quickly, this is where the site's traffic was turning and it received a, a tremendously positive reception. In fact, uh, in 2012, we were recognized by FastRap.com and National Scholarship Providers Association as the National Scholarship Provider of the Year uh, for this program. Uh, the success of our student blog, and here's an example of, of one of the, the individual blog posts, uh, really spoke to us about how hungry students are, especially first gens, uh, for encouragement and advice from near peers, um, those that they can really identify with, even in a virtual way, um, and who have come before them in their pursuit of college. Uh, in a lot of ways, uh, the, uh, the student blog inspired this whole rebranding around I'm First and the, the I'm First Stories campaign, which I'm going to tell you about in a moment. Um, but it is a, it is a competitive scholarship, and we're only funded right now to award eight or ten scholarships per year. Uh, but it would be awesome to, to see one of our future winners be from your institution and, and to blog about their experiences as a first-gen student at your school. So lastly, I'm First is a storytelling project that was really inspired by and modeled after the popular It Gets Better project, which you might be familiar with. Uh, we're collecting YouTube video stories from first-generation college students and graduates from across the country. Uh, these stories are coming from current students, successful graduates across many careers, uh, college deans and presidents and even some familiar faces, uh, like the First Lady, uh, Michelle Obama. Um, I wish I could play the video uh, for you. Um, I encourage you to go uh, to our stories page and find it and play it. It's, it's a anecdote about um, her, uh, her transition to Princeton, where she was a first gen. Um, unfortunately, the technology isn't going to allow us to, to, to stream the video um, and make that work crisply, so we're going to forego it, but uh, together these stories are, are really inspiring and offering advice to the next generation of students who will be first. Um, our college partners have been really great about rallying their campus communities behind this effort. Uh, some, like Bucknell University, are not only creating videos for our campaign, but they're hosting these I'm First stories on their own websites and, and using it for their own institutional marketing purposes, which we always encourage. Um, we'd love for you guys to share this campaign with your campus community. 
Um, even it, whether or not you uh, you do uh, pursue partnership with us, um, uh, we we want you to encourage uh, your first gen students, faculty, and and staff too uh, on your campus to participate and and create videos uh, for this campaign, which is really growing to be a a national public awareness uh, campaign, putting a face to who are first gens and and giving giving them a voice. We're we're working now to uh, to align the right partners and 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 raise funds to be able to to uh, to make a bigger uh, with uh, with this campaign through media and PR. Um, but it's still been been a very successful effort, um, and and it's been fun to watch it grow organically. So that's what's happening online at imfirst.org. Uh, alongside our online programs, we also publish and distribute the I'm First Guide to College annually. It's a unique college guide that's designed to help first gens uh, make their college dreams a reality. The, uh, the guide includes a college planning curriculum with articles and activities and worksheets, uh, as well as college partner profiles, which again, highlight the important campus programs and opportunities for first gens. <coughs> Excuse me. We are um, we are also uh, publishing email newsletters which uh, reach over 40,000 uh, students, counselors, college providers every year. Uh, our monthly Opportunity Knox newsletter highlights uh, uh, the opportunities for first-gen students on our college partner campuses. Uh, and we actively promote uh, these as well over our social media, primarily Twitter and Facebook, which uh, have been uh, growing in active communities for us, which we're really excited about. Uh, as a community of peer institutions, we're also facilitating opportunities for our college partners to share with one another and exchange ideas and best practices and successful models, uh, innovative approaches um, uh, that are happening on campuses. Uh, earlier this year, we launched the College Partner Exchange Listserv. Uh, we're also hosting webinars uh, on partner-driven topics like peer mentoring programs, partnering with CBOs, fly-in and visit programs, and we're going to start publishing white papers to document uh, some of these findings and, and lessons learned. Uh, for our student-facing programs, we're hosting monthly Twitter chats and Google Hangouts on air. Um, we found a lot of success as well in including our college partners in these opportunities. In fact, on Thursday night uh, is our first gen, our hashtag first gen office hour Twitter chat. And we're going to be focusing on specialized schools uh, and including representatives from our HBCU, HSI, military school, women's colleges, and Christian college partners uh, to participate. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is a mouthful, I know. Um, and thank you for bearing with me. You can probably hear in my voice I'm, I'm battling a, a cold. But um, hopefully that gives you a much more full picture of, of, of our program what it means to be a college partner. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to, to Brenda, who's going to walk us through uh, some of the details of the college partner application process. Uh, so Brenda, you want to take it away from here? Um, yes, thank you, Matt. So um, we are coming up on our first deadline on November 30th. Um, as it says here, we do accept applications twice a year, once in November and um, once at the end of May. So um, it's coming up on November 30th to begin on January 1st. And the link is there if you want any more information as well as um, begin the application process. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. And, oh. Is um, that the right one? I believe yeah. so, yes. <laughs> 
Um, so for the application process, um, what we want is to go over institution type, um, your overview of your mission and your history, as well as any specific information on first-gen initiatives. Um, we also want to learn about your campus programs, such as um, if you say are like a Posse partner or a QuestBridge partner that you're part of, any scholarship programs, as well as um, open house, fly-in, or visitation opportunities to attract um, first gens or traditionally underserved populations. And finally, any contacts that we can reach out to um, with what's going on at I'm First, as well as to represent your institution at um, any certain Google Hangouts or webinars that we may have, as Matt has Matt mentioned. <laughs> All right, and when your application is received, we will schedule um, a phone interview after um, we let you know after two days that we um, received it. And during the phone interview, we'll just go um, a little more in depth on what you talked about in your application, as well as um, any certain statistics on your institution and exactly how you are supporting first gens, as well as um, go over more um, on what's going on at I'm first and any other questions you may have on the college partnership process. Um, and within a couple days, we'll um, notify you if the application is approved, and then I will send over a college partner agreement to initiate the partnership, as well as um, the invoice and setting up your user account and all other onboarding questions you may have. And Great. So, um, so I think that brings us to our questions period. Hopefully that uh, helps everybody um, uh, understand who we are, what we're doing, and uh, um, the next steps uh, to getting involved, um, being completing uh, that college partner application. And uh, we look forward to reviewing them, learning more about you guys, and, and setting up phone interviews after uh, receiving them. But Brenda, mm -hmm. um, are there any questions coming in that we can um, address a couple of? Um, yes. Yeah, so. I'm not sure if this was answered directly, but um, the first one, and I believe we have another one of civil, similar nature, is how much is the annual contribution? Great. So uh, there are two levels of partnership, um, and you don't have to decide before uh, applying at which level you'd want to participate. We can talk about that through the phone interview um, and, uh, and, and beyond. But uh, the associate level partnership is a $1,500 uh, partnership contribution. Um, at the associate level, it's it's kind of more of a marketing advertising relationship. The school uh, is uh, is profiled on the website and part of the college search and is also profiled in the guidebook. But that's kind of the extent of the relationship uh, with us. Our full partners um, contribute $2,800 and uh, that supports the more strategic and, and, and collaborative ways we're working with with our partners, um, the access to prospective students on I'm First, the, uh, the access to the CBO directory, uh, the participation in the learning community efforts, uh, sponsoring a distribution of the guidebook uh, to low-income uh, serving high schools and community-based organizations. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Uh, when talking about the guidebook, but since we started publishing the book in, in 2008, we've distributed over 25,000 copies of the book to schools and, uh, and, and youth serving organizations. Uh, what we're really excited about is the, uh, the lion's share of that distribution has been sponsored by our college partners. So all of our full partners have the ability to identify schools and organizations that you want to make sure receive a copy of the book uh, on your behalf uh, and we send it out to them uh, every fall. Okay, great. So another question that we received is how many students uh, do your partner organizations report having recruited through your program as well as how do we specifically market to first gens? Cool. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're working on being more of a uh, I guess a, a data-driven organization. Uh, before we, we launched the I'm First project, uh, we, were, we were much more uh, of an informational clearinghouse than a real uh, lead generator, if you will, and our ability to track students and, and demonstrate outcomes as far as that is concerned was lacking. Um, we're able to do that more uh, through, the, uh, through the I'm First 
uh, project and, and are looking forward to, to using national student clearinghouse data and um, having our college partners report um, back to us uh, um, on the success they've found. I think at this point it's uh, much more qualitative than anything. I think um, the schools will, will cite that the visibility and the exposure that comes with um, being part of our program uh, and the entree to prospective students um, and, uh, and CBOs is, is, is a great value add and, and well worth uh, their, their investment. Um, uh, we, uh, we can give you a, a number in terms of uh, uh, our average um, uh, increases in first-gen applications or, or admits or enrollees and, and that kind of stuff at this point. Um, we do want to grow in that direction, uh, to be frank, uh, but we're also not a, a pure headhunter service. Um, we're not a uh, we're not a a college board, a CapEx, a Zinch type program. We're also not a Posse Foundation or a QuestBridge. Um, it's a different model. It's a different price point. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, there, there's value and, um, and benefit to be had. Um, what was the second part of the question, Brenda? Um, and how do we specifically market to first gens? Um, kind of along sure. with that, I did receive another question. If we are buying names, or is that how we are specifically reaching out to them? So if you could clear that up. Yeah, yeah, great. I appreciate that. We're not buying mm -hmm. names. Um, this is all organic uh, through outreach to high school counselors and college access programs by, primarily. That's who we market to. We encourage those who are on the front lines with uh, students um, to, uh, to use our website and our guidebook as tools with, with their students. So that's driving a lot of our traffic. Uh, we attend national conferences, NACAC, uh, NCAN, the National College Access Network, uh, NPA, the National Partnership for Educational Access, uh, National Scholarship Providers Association Conference, um, uh, and uh, other um, uh, conferences every year that, that get us in front of, uh, of colleges and universities as well as high school counselors and nonprofit organizations. Um, so those are are other ways we're, we're getting the word out um, and building these relationships. Uh, but more and more, we're also trying to uh, find ways to meet students where they are. And uh, where they are often is on social media. Um, we've been really excited about our growing Twitter and Facebook presences. Uh, we're lucky enough to be a Google grantee. Um, so we have free advertising on Google. Uh, and we come up very high on the results when somebody searches, you know, first-generation college students or, or scholarships or, or diversity programs and those types of keywords. So Google, being the powerful tool that it is, uh, is also driving a lot of uh, traffic and student participation to our programs. Okay, thank you, Matt. Um, another question, um, we've received some similar questions on this, is about graduation rates and retention. And since you mentioned that in the presentation, if we're looking for anything specifically, um, any certain numbers, um, what requirements um, would need to be met, and what would preclude yeah. a partner to be included? Great, I really appreciate that question. Um, you know, there's no scientific equation to evaluating um, how an institution uh, excels in serving and supporting first-gen students. We often find that, you know, at an institution that is maybe a little bit lower in retention and graduation years, um, it's because they're serving so many low-income first-gen students on their campus, and, uh, and, and, and we understand that. Uh, we want to be inclusive. Uh, we want to be about choice and opportunity for students. We want to be able to know that that your institution is um, uh, is uh, is genuinely committed uh, to um, to the student population, and we and we really weight uh, heavily the the programs and support services and retention intervention that your campus uh, is offering to the student population, but. The numbers uh, are important to an extent. We, we generally are hoping that our partners are at or above 
their state's average in retention in graduation. Um, I wouldn't uh, exclude a, an institution from applying if, if on paper their numbers are a little bit lagging, uh, but maybe they can demonstrate an upward trend um, and that they're moving in the right direction over the last five years or ten years. Um, and they can cite, they can point to specific um, programs uh, and, and, and supports that are now in place that are really helping raise that batting average. Um, we are four-year focused exclusively. We really believe in that experience for first-gen students and want to help them uh, better understand these types of, uh, of opportunities to be realistic and accessible and affordable options for them. Uh, and we want to be we partnering and promoting institutions that we believe are going to help uh, set these students up for success. Um, but there's not a, um, you know, a, a minimum number or threshold or, or kind of algorithm that we're running to, um, uh, to identify if, if a school uh, qualifies or not. So if you're concerned about where your retention and graduation rates stack up, um, I certainly wouldn't discourage you from applying, but that will be something that we will we'll talk about uh, during the interview process. Um, great. So we also have another uh, good question, and it's about the, our current partners. And it's, we have a relatively small residential population compa compared to um, a commuter student, and do we have other partners that fit that type of profile, where it's a mostly um, commuting students? Yeah, um, I, I believe we do. Uh, it, it would definitely be the the minority, um, but not to say that we're 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 not interested in 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 including more institutions that fit that mold in our work if they can demonstrate a track record of success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On behalf of first gen students, I think um, you know our our founding our founding mission. Uh, you know, had a special interest in the in the four year residential experience um, and, and that opportunity uh, for first gen students. We tend to see um, you know, these students graduating uh, at higher rates um, from the uh, from residential campuses. But again, it's something that if you have have a small or or no residential population on your campus. Uh, we'll want to talk about that through the interview process and compare that to uh, your your data um, to make a determination on on the fit there. But I do think that for a school like that, there are some valuable um, opportunities through our partnership for uh, learning from other institutions, bringing new ideas to to your campus. Some of the the um, the the recruitment tenants of our program, because the commuter school tends to draw much more locally, may not be what is attractive to you. But I think the learning community work and, and being part of, of this this uh, this peer network um, could uh, have relevance. So uh, hopefully that helps answer your question a little bit. Yeah, and I think those are all the questions that we received. Um, I did want to let everyone know that if you there's someone who wanted to attend but wasn't able to um, at your at your institution, um, this webinar will be available online hopefully within a week or so. So they can um, review it for themselves and um, go over it and find out more about our college uh, partnership program. Great. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we hope to see your applications come in over the next few weeks. Again, November 30th is the deadline uh, for initiating your partnership effective January 1st. Um, the sooner you can get an application in, the sooner we can schedule the phone interview um, and, uh, and, and, and get going on, on initiating you into our, into our program. So, Thank you again. We'll be following up with a recording of the webinar and, and, and touching base. Uh, so um, enjoy the rest of your day.